And in today's sporting headlines, Arsenal are one game away from being the first team in the modern era to go an entire football season unbeaten. It was a euphoria of people arriving to the ground. They couldn't imagine that it would go wrong. Arsene Wenger saying in the programme today, if we do complete an unbeaten season, I believe that's an achievement that would live with these players and with this club forever. They surely will not lose to relegated Leicester City at home, will they? You know that it can happen because crazy things happen, but it felt almost impossible. It was more of a like, ugh, feeling. Could Arsenal come a cropper right at the death in their season? You couldn't write it, could you? Surely Arsenal are going to turn this around. Surely, surely. And the guy next to me turned around at half time and went, Invincible, my ass. Suddenly, there's a different mood about the place. Optimism abounds, dreams to be realised or crushed. That Arsenal team had charisma. I think that was its speciality. There was a feeling within each individual that kind of spread and permeated and became even stronger within the group when you multiplied it, of just being so certain about what they were doing. It really was an exceptional team from back to front. Jens Lehmann in goal. Lauren at right back. Sol Campbell and Colo Torre, the new combination at centre back. Ashley Cole at left back. Colo done a great job as well at centre half alongside Sol, and he was immense. Patrick Vieira in midfield, dominant. Everything had to go through him, yeah. didn't it? it was like, yeah, yeah, Patrick and Gilberto were very, very important. Robert Perez. Freddie Youngberg. Freddie had always uh, pop up with a goal, didn't he, in vital times? We had a physical attribute, we had technical ability, we had uh, creativity, we had character as well. And up front, it's hard to find much better than Thierry Henry and Dennis Bergkamp. Henri reached a level, Ray. Hmm. We came almost on play. Henri tucks it away, customary applause. Henri is on his way again, so too perhaps Arsenal. When you play for Arsenal Football Club, it's about winning the title, nothing else. Whether you're winning or not, but at the beginning of the season, when you prepare yourself, that's what you do. Right for Perez. For good effort, good save. He's going to go in, is he? No save. It's 2 0. Martin, he had this way of wanting to drive people, striving for perfection. And then Ray was, you know, the classic joker in the pack who kept things light and bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut that bit out. <laughs> they bring that sense of in the shirt of what Arsenal is. That's it. The final whistle goes. Arsene Wenger kicks off the new campaign with three points. We knew that we had the team to, to win the title. We were good enough. But we knew at the same time that we needed to be consistent in our performances to allow ourselves to finish in the top. My binding memory is how at the work, the dynamic of the group, the way it all worked together as one. And you look around you in the dressing room, you see all the players, and you think, yeah, this is quite a special team. We're strong enough to just think of competing for winning the league. Oh, Arsenal are in again. It's Freddie Lundberg, so unselfish, setting up Sylvain Wiltord for his second. And Arsenal's fourth. They are awesome. They are Arsenal. The most important thing was winning the trophy, wasn't it? Jerez going to get in behind. It's an awkward bounce. It might break for him. It's Jungberg, and it's 2-1 felt every season that we could could and should win, win the league. That's how good I felt we were. It would always been a, a good feeling. We, we prepared ourselves well. We worked quite really hard because we wanted to compete against United, against Chelsea, to win the league. And we give ourselves the best shots to win it. It really was a dream start.
start of the season for Arsenal, a near perfect start, but up next will be one of their toughest tests. They are away to their fierce rivals, Manchester United. Manchester United were the best team, wasn't they, by a mile? I mean, Sir Alex Ferguson really set up a, a team of, of winners, really. We knew how difficult it was going to be. We knew that if we wanted to win the title, we needed to finish in front of United. They were the teams to, to beat. We knew that our game against them was massive because we could somehow disturb them a bit. And the rivalry was crazy. The press was making it bigger than what it was, or maybe not. And the feeling we had as a team was like, we are stronger than them. We are better than them. We can show that even at their crowns. I think, though, that Old Trafford seemed to be a daunting place for everybody else but ourselves. Arsenal and Man United had been eyeball to eyeball for some years by then, and the intensity of that particular match was like fire. It was intense arriving in the country, and everything was about United. They've been dominating the league, and that was the teams to beat. They knew it was tough to beat us. We knew it was tough to beat them. So until we meet again, it was type of thing. It was the two heavyweights. It was the heavyweight title. Bow on the top of the card for several seasons in a row. Make no mistake about it. This is a big one. It always is. It's Manchester United against Arsenal from Old Trafford. That's quite a shot, isn't it? Sir Alex and Arsene Wenger. So how does this one pan out, I wonder? Just get that little bit more pressure on you because you knew the managers were at each other and playing mind games. But it was always a feisty game, wasn't it, Mike? There was some bad blood between the two sides. It was all about being on their face and to show to them that, you know, we wanted to compete against them and it was about sending them a message. Suddenly, Patrick Vieira was sent off and, and all hell broke loose. And it's all kicking off here suddenly. It's about how we wanted to compete on the field to make them understand that, you know, we are there and we want to win it as well as much as they want to. And it's Vieira who's going to be sent off here. It was a bit like the Alamo then, wasn't it? Yeah, they it were was. coming at us from all, they saw an opportunity. Into the danger zone, Forland goes down, Manchester United won a penalty and they've got it too. Well, we wondered if there'd be late drama and there is. Was it a penalty, Martin? I don't think it was a penalty. And it might well be the last kick of the game, because look at the clock. It says 92, 46. There's only supposed to be three minutes added. How big a moment is this in this season's championship? But it's Ruud van Nistelrooy to win it for Manchester United. And in a surprising admission today, Arsenal manager Arsene Wenger believes his team can go unbeaten at Bayern. <laughs> He says his team can go an entire season without losing. I'm convinced of it. But I remember when he said it, I was at home, I was like, why? He was the only one who really believed that we can go through a season meeting because as a player, we never talk about it. Our priority for us as a player was to win the league and to win the title. It was his dream. It wasn't really the dream of the players. Thierry Henry called it the invisible prize. You know, everybody already, when you play Arsenal, like, it's a special game for everyone. And so I was like, why, why would you, like, wind people up? But I don't think he wanted to wind people up. I think he thought that that could be done. I actually don't know why he said it, because we lost straight after, I think, when he said it. You've got to look at the key of why he said it. He said it because he believed strongly in that group. Wholeheartedly believed that that group were capable of doing that. And that's some statement just to lay out. This is a pressure uh, to put on the players. And his focus was always about the performance. You need to have a little bit of luck, luck never to lose a game and stuff like that. I just hope you had a few quid on it. <laughs> <laughs> It's Ruud van Nistelrooy, and he's hit the underside of the bar, and he's missed again. Amazing, absolutely amazing. We could actually hear the ball crack against the crossbar. The noise shudders, and then, ah, like all the reaction. And of course, Arsenal just, it was like a, like a trigger. That is the final whistle. It was very nearly the last kick, and van Nistelrooy is getting shoved around now by the Arsenal players. 
Sometimes you went, went a bit too far. I remember that day that we were just ready to, to win there and maybe we're a little bit disappointed that we didn't. In the end, it was a good result. It was a different feeling in the dressing room that season because we, were, we wanted to be the best. You know, Man United fans will see it differently, but as a group of players, I think we just saw that as justice when he missed. And of the anger of the group was really, you could say maybe that took us forward. <laughs> always had a chance uh, every single weekend and with the quality they had as well it was a dream to play in and be involved in a group like that Arsenal creates a record the best premiership start to the season by any team they ended up like just getting more and more powerful and expressive it was just part of all the building blocks that came together to make this, you know, great tower of strength. By 2004, I'd been attending matches at Highbury for decades. But I, was, I felt so at home there, and I was so fortunate having experienced Highbury in lots of different ways. Well, it was, uh, it was very special to, for, for me, you know, with the tunnel, it was very tight. I just remember it being electric. It was like my favourite place to be. Turning down into Avenal Road from the top, the view down the hill, when you've got the facade of the East Stand rising beautifully in its Art Deco style, and the, flags at the top. If that's your club, that's about as good as it gets. It was a fortress. We always talk about fans being the 12 men on the field, and, and Highbury was the place where the crowd was really over and given us the support that we needed. You know, I, I loved Highbury. I thought it was superb. Highbury was your second home, really. You know, um, and it was always a pleasure to play there. We could play the football so, so fast, much faster than we could play anywhere else because just how the groundsman done the pitch, it suited our way of playing. We wanted to play with a lot of intensity, a lot of pressure, a lot of transition, and we managed to, to dictate the tempo of the game and we managed to put teams under pressure. felt that inner strength within the team or the squad and there was never any any doubt. Arsenal on their way to history. We handle one game at a time and uh, just focus on the next one. It's a massive one. Arsenal have been on this rhythm of winning, winning, not losing. Two losses in the space of a week for Arsenal. Lots of questions about their out, out of the Champions League. Well, this is how quickly it can change, Martin, isn't it? You remember that week um, we went out of the FA Cup, really disappointing to, to United. Mentally, it was difficult. It was really challenging for us because we were out of those two competitions that we wanted to do well, especially the one in the Champions League. But it was only natural, wasn't it, maybe to feel that we'd blown it a little bit because you had a possible treble and to go out of the Champions League to in the way we did was unexpected, mm. to say the least. So it was a really, it was a, a really difficult week. It was almost like a, you know, a pack of cards, a, a, a house of cards, and you take the bottom one off, and phew, it was that sense of everything suddenly collapsing. Oh. Your mind plays funny tricks with you sometimes. You know, they then had Liverpool at home. There's that thing going, oh my God, is it all falling apart? There's the half-time whistle, and Arsenal really up against it here. Okay, I remember being in the dressing room at half-time against Liverpool, and I stood back and I, I, I did notice that there was that everyone was deflated. Yeah. Be and down. I felt people were feeling sorry for themselves a little, selves a little bit, which is natural, and I felt the gaffer didn't quite have the same edge to his team talk. And I asked, could I say something? But only out of, born out of the fact that the gaffer had promoted this over the years. And I was kind of challenging the group. To, you know, it's the best group of players I've ever been involved with. Just, we just need to score the next goal. Yeah, exactly. And the lid comes off this place. We had some real leaders in the team and 
we were really close to each other. So we were talking quite a lot and telling us the truth about what we wanted to achieve. Arsenal have it all to do. Arsenal have to come from a goal down. And when the ref blew the whistle, we all came out like animals. But on that particular day, uh, um, Reid was just oh, different. Class. Unplayable. So. Look away, Jamie Carragher. <laughs> I think that goal reflects who he was as a player for Arsenal Football Club. That goal was like life support. He's on side. Did you ever doubt them? And Arsenal still on course to make history. The wobbles have gone, the juggernaut marches on. The difference between drawing the game and winning it is what altered Arsenal's belief and what put them back together. Cherry that year was unbelievable. There was an energy that came from Henri and a desire. He used to get it from the crowd as well, didn't he? You could see him playing with the crowd at times. He loved Highbury. Mm. He loved Highbury. And, and once he got the bit between the teeth and he was focused and he came, and that season, I think, above any other, other he was incredible to, to play against. Mm. Really. It's been another exemplary display by Arsenal and their main man, Thierry Henry. Fairly soon after that came the moment that really put the entire scenario into Arsenal's hands in the best possible way. Chelsea's title challenge may be all but over. The Blues were beaten 2-1 away at Newcastle, meaning Arsenal, unbelievably, only need a point against Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> And so, Arsenal have a chance against their North London rival, Tottenham Hotspur, at White Hart Lane, crowned Premier League champions. The maths was suddenly very clear. Avoid defeat, win the league at White Hart Lane. This is White Hart Lane. This is the day of destiny for Arsenal Football Club. And where else would they love to do it, apart from their own beloved Highbury, of course, than here up the road at Tottenham Hotspur's home? Oh, yeah, it was always going to be special. Going into that game, Martin, I don't even remember. We had to get a point. Yeah. We'd done it in 2 2 didn't we? Winning Old Trafford, yeah. which is one of your big rivals as well. So it was extra special, obviously. And they're off and running. <laughs> <laughs> And this sublime Arsenal side has got one hand on the title. No French connection, look. Yeah. Arsenal are the new Premier League champion. There's a lot of rivalry between fans, especially, that sparks the players as well. And therefore, it made it a bit special, but the main thing was, of course, becoming champions. I remember the stewards said, you know, you can't celebrate all on the pitch. And we was like, what? You know, we, we're certainly going to celebrate. We just won the league. Yeah, great day. I think I went out for two days after. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I think we started to realise that we could do it once we clinched the title at the lane. And some games were remaining and we are like, all right, you know, I can be cool. But I will be honest with you, the only one that was really excited about it was Arsene. I think the players found it really, really difficult to find the, the levels of motivation that Arsene had. And he kept stressing to them, like, this is your chance to be immortal. Like, this is history. Come on. If you finish a marathon and someone says, do you want to do another one? Why? Or, uh, you know, I'm talking about, obviously, it's not exactly the same, but it's about you just finished. You won. I think it was about seven or eight games before the end of the season where the press started saying, well, they haven't been beaten yet. Can they do it? And then we had four games left. For me, Martin, I don't know, I played in quite a few of the last four. It was the hardest games I played in. So... It's tough. It, it's it tough was tough. Just to mentally get yourself ready for the game. And obviously it was Birmingham, Portsmouth. 
Fulham and Leicester. But one of those teams wanted to beat us as well, badly. But Arsenal was, you know, guys, if we if you do this, that will go down in history forever. 37 gone, 37 unbeaten, one to go. And in the sport, it's the final day of the Premier League season. One thing for certain is Arsenal will get their hands on the Premier League trophy. The question that remains is, can they go an entire season unbeaten? Something which hasn't been done in the modern era. There were a lot of talk about going through the season unbeaten, but we celebrate a lot winning the title and we wanted, of course, to give the fans something really special, some things to, to remember. And we were talking about making that group of players really special. There was a euphoria of people arriving to the ground. They couldn't imagine that it would go wrong. It's Arsenal against Leicester City. 37 down. To go. You know that it can happen because crazy things happen, but it felt almost impossible. There was a lot of question marks like, oh, do they have the motivations? Can they do it or not? And looking for Paul Dick up on the far post. That wasn't in the script, was it? We played, I believe, the game in our mind before we played it on the field. And that's why we didn't start it well enough to do what we wanted to do. Surely Arsenal are going to turn this around. Surely, surely. The surprising news here is that Arsene Wenger will have to go and roust up his troops for the second half. It's Arsenal nil, Leicester City one. I think we didn't panic. I don't think we panicked half time. I think that weren't in our makeup with the uh, quality of, of players we had on the pitch. It was never in doubt, really, that you're going to get back in the game somewhere along the line. I think more than two were people were anxious, but they knew. I think the we fans were, were anxious yeah, more I than the players, if I'm we, being honest. It was a matter of time. Welcome back to Highbury. Worried faces in the Arsenal camp. What did Arsene Wenger say at half time? At half time, really, the conversation was. We can't finish the season like that because what we've been doing, we are one step of doing something that people or even ourselves will remember for forever. Bergkamp. Oh, it's actually Cole! Great chance! Is that a penalty kick? Yes, lifeline for Arsenal. is resumed. He was never going to mess that one up. Bad camp. Patrick knew exactly when I had the ball where he wanted to run. It's Vieira. Oh, it's a picture goal to put Arsenal in front. That's why they're the champions. There's no way that we will throw that away. The most glorious season that any Arsenal fan, I'm sure, can remember. They are History men. Not one side could defeat them in 38 games. As long as football is played in England, they will remember what Arsenal have done in this campaign. When that whistle went at the final whistle, it was just relief, wasn't it? We've done it. You don't realise because you the game's just finished. You want to celebrate of winning the title. You want to spend that time, that moment with, with your teammates, with the fans. It's funny when you're watching history in the making right in front of your eyes. Quite often things that are historic, you sort of accept them afterwards a little bit more. You begin to realise what something means with the passage of time and a bit more context. It was the moment that this team was, it almost reached the pinnacle and climbing Mount Everest to go on beating for a whole season. Yes, you talk about yeah, it's in beating and it's fantastic, it's good, but we did not realise how uh, big it was and how big it is. Because what we wanted to do is just to leave the trophy. The captain of Arsenal 
the captain of the new Invincibles, the captain of the side that goes into the history books, the first side of the modern era to go through a season unbeaten, the champion of San Arsenal. I must admit that this achievement gets better each year because at that moment you're happy. You don't really know what it means at that time. And then you hear the stories that, oh, that's never been done and will it be done again? I believe it will happen. It will happen because Rukod are there to get beaten. So it will happen. When? <laughs> that is the, the question. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.